In this video, I am going to be talking about why the finals is simply just the best FPS game that you can play right now. And with Season 4, I'm pretty sure that it's going to become even better. So a big thing for me about this game is that you can always win, right? Up until the very last, like, 10 seconds of a match, you can always qualify. You can either, like, get that cash out steal, which will put you in front of someone else, or you can, like, wipe a team, which will make them have less cash than you, so you'll actually overtake them, or both. So maybe someone's, like, really far ahead, but you wipe them and you steal the cash out, and then you're just really far ahead of everyone else. So this is an objective-based game, but a really nice thing about it is that it's it's always possible to win right up until that very last 10 seconds of the game. So even if you have like 3,000 cash, and cash, by the way, is like the objective score. So even if you only have like 3,000 cash, but someone has like 30,000, if you wipe them and then get the last cash out, you can still win. And that's really just not that present in very many other games. If you're getting like steamrolled for most of the game, you're probably just going to lose that. Like in like Overwatch or even in like a game like Fortnite where if you don't have very good loot and then you're up against someone that has like legendary stuff with full shields and lots of heals and lots of materials and all of that kind of stuff you're probably just not going to win that game but that really just isn't a thing in the finals you can really just always turn things around which is fantastic. This is a game with trios so it like most of the modes are trios except for terminal attack but we're not gonna think about that right now so this this game is trios for the most part which means there is a lot of solo carry potential in the game now this is similar to other games as well like apex is probably the best example but there's a lot more solo carry potential in this game because a lot of the time your wins are going to be determined by your game sense as much as they are your mechanical sense. So you don't always have to eliminate the person to win, unlike in a game like Apex, because you win the battle royale mode by eliminating all of the other people, right? But in the finals, you don't actually have to ever eliminate anyone to win. You could theoretically win a game without getting a single kill. I've done that in certain game modes, actually. So you have insane solo carry potential, because if you're like smart and if you're really thinking about kind of the thing to do that gives you the best chance of winning then you can just go ahead and do that and that will give your entire team a kind of advantage and then if you've got good game sense and you have like a, a higher advantage because you're using that good game sense that's going to be almost better than having like insane mechanical skill because again it's an objective based game and getting kills here and there does help and being like really really good and having insane aim is going to be useful but it's definitely not necessary in a game like this. You absolutely can win with just like mediocre aim and very good game sense. That's that's really just how I win most of my games. And that's a very nice thing about this. Um, and also if you're solo and if you're not voice chatting, you're not text chatting, you're just solo queuing, it's extremely possible to just do this in solo games yourself as well. A huge thing as well is the skins. There is no FOMO, while well, there is very little FOMO, which means fear of missing out for anyone that doesn't know, with the skin. So in other games, when something goes into the store, if you don't buy it, then you don't know how long it's going to be until it comes back in the shop. So, you know, if, if something goes in the store, you don't buy it or you're not available to play so you can't buy it and it goes away, then maybe the next time you're going to see it is going to be in like six months. Maybe it'll be a year. Maybe it'll be like two years. And that creates a very big kind of fear of missing out, um, which kind of just leads players to bulk buy stuff. Um, but in the finals, you can buy every skin that's ever been made available in the store directly from your kind of customization section. So if there is a skin that went into the store like three weeks ago and it's not in the store anymore, you can just go ahead and buy that. And also the way they've done like the bundles is you can buy individual things from the bundles. And if you buy an individual thing from a bundle, um, the price of the bundle goes down so that you can still buy the bundle later at no extra cost. Uh, so the skins and the FOMO for the skins is just really fantastic. I will clarify that there is a little bit of FOMO with like the battle pass and stuff, but not for the actual skins that go into the store. You can always buy those from your kind of customization section, which is something that as far as I'm aware, not any other FPS does right now. 
And while I'm on the topic of cosmetics, the finals really just does have the best cosmetics I've ever seen. They really pay a lot of attention to what the community wants as well, but I'll get onto that in a minute or two. The cosmetics are just awesome. They're very, very, very good. And because of the way the customization works, you could mix and match whatever kind of uh, skins you have. So you can have like the gloves from one skin and like the hood of another, for example, which is really fantastic. But the skins are the best because Embark just puts a whole lot of work into them. There's multiple skins that have like unique animations on them. For example, I can think of this M11 skin that's kind of like a retro -y type skin and it shoots um, like game chips. I don't know what they're called or something like that. There's also like a Lewis Gun gambling casino skin that also shoots like game chips, but a different type of chip. It shoots like one of those casino things. I don't know what it's called. Um, and I think one of them has a unique weapon inspect animation as well. There's also a backpack that you can buy that just has a full on playable game on it. Um, so Embark really just does put a lot of effort into most of, if not all of their skins. And I don't think any other game really does that. Like even Overwatch has like legendary skins, but they don't really give you anything close to what the finals gives you for like a decent skin. Um, and in Overwatch, they're severely overpriced as well. Um, so the skins in this game are definitely just top, top, top notch. There has been constant developer communication since the game released. Every time there's a patch, they'll be in there in the Discord posting those patch notes. And I know a lot of games don't do this, I don't really know why, but a lot of the time if you're playing like, well not COD, but I think Fortnite at a time didn't have patch notes, maybe it does now. And I think Warzone, I'm pretty sure Warzone at a time also didn't have patch notes. Um, and then you just kind of had to unofficially kind of guess what they were doing, or they would like kind of ghost buff or ghost nerf something, which means they didn't list it in the patch notes at all. Maybe they didn't really want the player base to know about it. But with the finals, every time there's a patch, it just goes straight in the Discord. You click on it, it sends you to like the official finals patch notes page, and you can also go and look at all of the other past patch notes. And it's just really simple to go and look at and, um, and even aside from patch notes they're just like talking with the community in general and they'll occasionally just kind of like tease or leak something for the new season like recently it was announced that there would be animated player cards in season four and this wasn't an official post or anything this was just like one of the official people from embark talking to just a, a random dude in the chat and that was just like kind of naturally leaked in tea. So they do just kind of, they literally just talk to their community directly on the Discord as well. And also, while we're on this topic, the developers constantly live stream with official like content creators. So I think Fixie was the most recent one. He did a stream with Oscar and then Oscar also did a stream with Otter quite a while ago as well. But it's really cool to see developers just like actually playing their own game because that's something I really don't think a lot of game companies are doing right now. I could name a good few but I won't get into that. Um, but they are actually playing their own game and they're also doing that with content creators to kind of well, just, 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 just to do, and it's probably a collab, but it, they do also probably get like the feedback of content creators as well, which is fantastic. And speaking of feedback, they do listen to it. Um, so sometimes they do nerf or buff things too hard as a result of feedback, but ultimately it is a good thing that they listen to the feedback in game. So when the stun gun was powerful, that was nerfed. When the cloaking device was powerful, that was nerfed. When the RPG was powerful, that was nerfed because everyone in the Discord was basically like, hey, this is too powerful, this should be nerfed. And so the developers just kind of did that. You could definitely make an argument for or against whether or not listening to the community is a good or bad thing, because a lot of the time the community doesn't really know what they're talking about, especially if they're not actually playing the game much themselves, which certainly does happen. But regardless of that argument and whichever side you're on, they do listen to community feedback. And just to quickly give another example, I think there was like a petition that was signed by enough people that the developers ultimately put a frog onesie into the game, which is now a skin that you can buy. So there was like a streamer that dressed up in a frog onesie um, and there was a petition for it so that if enough people signed, the developers would put the frog onesie in game and then enough people signed and then the developers actually did put the skin in game, which is just something I don't think I've ever seen another FPS game do. And it's just really cool to see. Lots of free stuff, lots and lots and lots of free 
things that you can earn. So in a game like Warzone, there's a skin. There's one singular uh, like character skin that you can earn for free by doing ranked. And then there's like three or four other skins you can unlock for free by like completing some challenges here and there. Um, but you never really get anything huge without putting a lot of work in to grind it, aside from like the few kind of starting character skins which are fairly easy to uh, unlock via challenges. And even in a game like Fortnite, they'll have like a, a seasonal kind of skin that you can get for free every now and then. But most of the time, if you're getting free stuff, it's just gonna be like maybe some V-Bucks here and there, and then maybe like a pickaxe skin or like um, a, a weapon spray or something, a weapon skin. But it's never really going to be a character skin. In the finals, free skins and free character skins are constantly given out in pretty much every seasonal event. In fact, there's one going on right now. There's a challenge to detonate, I think it's 30 million? That might be the wrong number, but I think if the community collectively detonates 30 million frag grenades within the next week, then everyone just gets like a free top skin. Um, and they constantly do these types of events. And that's just really cool to see. And they've constantly given out lots and lots and lots of free stuff kind of just over the course of when the game has been released. And even the contracts this season, they give you a lot of free skins as well. And you don't need to pay a dime to unlock those. So this is also something that I'm pretty sure not any other company really does, just giving out lots of free stuff. That just doesn't normally happen. Sometimes they'll give out some free stuff, but it's never this much. So this is definitely really cool to see. And speaking of that, there is a grind if you want it. So there is a grind to get up to, you know, the highest rank and get that kind of free uh, rank reward. There's also a grind for World Tour to get those uh, multi-bucks, I think they're called in this game. But these are absolutely not necessary to do. There is a very small grind if you're a new player to kind of unlock all the weapons, but it's absolutely nothing in like compared to what the warzone grind would be for example that that grind is absolutely insane um it's just there so that people play the game for longer but in the finals you can very 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 quickly unlock absolutely everything you can probably do it in like two days if you just play like all day um but in warzone that's not going to be possible as far as i'm aware unless you're using like xp tokens and stuff, uh, you're not going to get that done in two days, especially for every weapon. But in the finals, you absolutely can. So there's a very small grind for new players that come into the game to kind of unlock all the stuff that they want to. And then for players that already have everything unlocked, there's really not much of a grind unless you actually want to try and go for getting like a free ranked reward by making your way through the ranks in like a competitive game mode. But there's really, el there's really nothing else that the game kind of like forces you to grind for, which is something that Warzone definitely does. And I think the last thing I'm going to touch up on is when there is a seasonal update, these updates are huge. And even in a game like Fortnite, they're big, but they don't add a whole lot. Normally when there's a new season in Fortnite, the map gets changed a little bit. The battle pass is new, there's new skins of the battle pass and all that, and there'll be like a new weapon or two, and maybe there'll be a balancing change as well. So the map will tend to only get slightly changed. And even in Warzone, I don't think the maps really change that much whenever there's a new season. Um, it will be like every few seasons where a map is, is kind of changed altogether, or like the rotation of the maps is changed or something like that. Um, but in the finals, whenever there is a seasonal update, which means like season 1 to season 2, season 2 to season 3 and so on, whenever there is a, a seasonal update, there's always been a new map so far. In season 1, I don't remember, I think it was Soul or Skyway in season 1. Season 2 was also Soul or Skyway, I'm pretty sure. Season 3 was um, System Horizon, and then season 4 would have been Kyoto. No, sorry, season 3 was Kyoto, and then season 4 is going to be like the sports stadium. Um, and then the Kyoto was added in somewhere along the way. Maybe it was one of the betas that Solar Skyway was added in. Anyway, there's always been a new map with each season, along with lots of new weapons. There's generally been one new weapon for each class, and then there's also been, like, one new specialization for each class, or one new, like, gadget for one of the classes as well with each season. So there's a new map. There's always more content, and there's usually a fair few balancing changes as well every season. 
Um, and if you compare this to, you know, other games, they just, they don't really do that that much. Like Tarkov, for example, when Tarkov does its wipes, they'll generally be about like six months long or a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but sometimes a little bit more. And I think with the most recent wipe, we got like one new weapon and a few reworks to some of the maps and that was it but we didn't get a new map or anything. And that was six months. And the final seasons are normally like three months. And I know Tarkov is in a pretty bad state, but it's also a very, very famous game that gets lots and lots of money. And Embark is like a pretty small team. The Steam charts are like pretty small, I would say, um, at least compared to what they probably should be and what I feel like it deserves. But with what they have, they're putting a lot of resources into actually developing the game and expanding the weapons that you can use, the loadouts you can use, and the maps that you can play on, which is absolutely fantastic. And they consistently have done that every season since the game has launched. The developers are also constantly working on quality of life things every week or two. Um, if you don't see a balancing update, there will be bug fixes. They are always working on bug fixes. They're always working on improving the performance of the game. In fact, next season, it's already been confirmed that we're getting like an engine update to season four of the final. So they're always working on quality of life stuff, bug fixes, visual kind of reworks. Um, I think in this patch actually today or yesterday that went out, we got like a, a ladder rework, which no one asked for, but I'm sure it looks better now than it did before. So we're just constantly getting quality of life things on top of like really cool cosmetics on top of like actual content for the game like maps and weapons and gadgets and all of that stuff so i really do think that this game just deserves more players i i genuinely think that a part of why this game doesn't have a huge player base is because season one and season two in the betas were a little bit rough with input like and cheaters um so maybe people just kind of forgot about it a little bit but I would be surprised if Season 4 didn't put this game on the radar a little bit more, because it really is just the best FPS game. Oh, another last thing I didn't touch up on is, if you die in a game like Apex or Warzone or Fortnite or any Battle Royale, you, you just go back to the lobby, then you have to start another game, which takes a pretty long time. Or even if it's a game like um, CSGO, if you die, you have to wait a really long time for that round to be over. In the finals, if you die, you just get team wiped. I think it's like 20 to 30 seconds that you have to wait, and then you're all alive again. Alternatively, you can just not get team wiped, and then you can just get revived, or you can coin um, as, as soon as possible. So if, you, if your entire team dies, it's not like you get sent back to the lobby, and then you have to wait another like three minutes to find a game, which is a pretty small thing. But it is like a huge thing you notice when you go to play other games. If you die in Warzone, it's like, oh, I have to find something to do for three minutes while I'm loading back into the lobby and then loading back into another game and then filling the lobby of that game then actually joining that game. There's, it's, it's like a long process. And in the finals, you, just, you really just don't feel that that much. Um, I'm going to stop talking now. I think I've proved my point. If you haven't played the finals before and you're just kind of seeing this video, because maybe you've heard about the finals, but you've never given it a try. I would definitely give it a try. It's a free game. You can always just not play it or just uninstall it if you want to. But I would definitely give it a try. I do genuinely think it's just a much better game than any other FPS that's out there right now. I think it's not that popular because Embark is a new team and they just they, they don't have any kind of history of games behind them. They are all former DICE employees, so they would have been working on the OG Battlefield games if you're someone that liked those, so maybe that will give you inspiration to try it out, but it really just is an absolutely fantastic game, and I really do think it should just have more eyes on it, and I'm very excited for Season 4 of the game, which I think will only improve upon all of the aforementioned things that I have gone through. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell.